Oh, hello. How's it going? Welcome back to Attack the Pantry. I am Jen De La Vega. This stream is a deep dive into ingredients, cooking techniques, and recipes to help you cook for yourself, uh, you know, during the panini and the rest of your adult life. Um, say hello in the chat if you're here. Uh, we love to throw eggs, egg emoji, egg emotes, uh, whenever we like what we're seeing or hearing. Um, that's how we show love on this show. Last time on Attack the Pantry, what did I do? I've just been streaming a lot of Elden Ring, right? I ground some spices one week. Hey, Sean, how you doing? I got your photos. Yeah. Egg. Egg. How you doing? Seems like you're cooking up a storm where you are. <laughs> it's awesome. Um, as for actual cooking, what did we do last time that I when I actually cooked? I prepped a bunch for my pop-up. That's what I did. Yeah, but I've been playing a lot of Elden Ring, so hopefully I'll get to play more this week. Uh, I only get to play in like hour-long, two-hour spurts, uh, but it's good. It's good in the end. I don't need to play eight hours of Elden Ring. <laughs> Uh, just to get some business out of the way, you can watch all the past clips here on my channel if you click on videos, or the entire archive is located at youtube.com slash J-E-N-N-D-L-B, and I'll put that on the screen for you right there. Boom. Look at that. Um, what else is happening? Uh, I'm a Twitch affiliate. Hooray. Uh, that means subscriptions help keep this channel going. You can either connect your Amazon account to your Amazon Prime account to Twitch and you can gift a subscription every month to your favorite creators, or you can use real ass money to subscribe every month, which is very nice, a nice thing to do. Or if you don't have any of this so-called money, you, you can check out all the links below the video uh, to my Patreon, my Etsy store. There are just so many projects so little time to discuss. Uh, but those are ways to uh, participate and hang out and whatever. Uh, we have a wish list for this show. Uh, I have like a list of ingredients that I'm interested in that we want to experiment with. I still have some ingredients we need to use up from other folks who have sent them in. So thank you so much if you've already sent in some ingredients. Uh, no rush, no need, but if you ever want to check it out or suggest items to put on the list, it is here. Put it in the chat. Um, what else? I also have a list of books that I've worked on on Bookshop, which is an alternative to Amazon, if you are interested in checking them out. They're great, by the way. They connect... Uh, independent bookstores to the internet so that you can pre-order or order things and they ship it to you and it's not Amazon. It goes directly to independent bookstores. It's pretty cool. Um, what else? That's the business. That's the business, my friends. Uh, let's get into it. So uh, if you want to be included in the next segment of the show, all you have to do is tag me on Instagram or DM me your cooking photos or cooking memes or whatever you find on the internet that has to do with food. If you have a question about an ingredient, you can submit it to me that way as well. But um, this is just a show and tell portion of the show. It's super fun. I love it. I love rooting for people. <laughs> I love seeing your house projects. It's very, very cool. All right, let's check it out. Sean is actually here in the chat. You made tons of hot sauce. That is that is so many bottles of hot sauce. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Fourteen plus bottles of hot sauce? That's a lot. Did you grow all of those chili peppers? It's impressive if you did. <laughs> Jalapeno, cayenne, spicy pineapple, mango, and Tabasco. Did the pineapple mango have habanero in it? I see. Yeah, you do have a lot of peppers from last year. Do you actually end up drying some of them if you don't do sauce? Oh, hi, Phil. Phil Lynn, I didn't see you there. Hello. How's it going? Love to see some eggs. 
Um, but this is always fun. Did you end up gifting these to friends and family or do you just keep a stock of hot sauce in your house? Oh, I see. These were all dried from last year. Cool. You're just getting rid of the stock. <laughs> That's nice. Hot sauce is always a fun condiment to make. I love. Yeah, it's some beautiful sauce, right? It's really beautiful. I like the creamy texture of it. It doesn't look like, you know, that really vinegary, watery stuff. Even though I do love vinegary, watery stuff every now and then. Hey, Joseph. How you doing? We're back. We're streaming. Look at us go. Um, Sean also made some apple pies. Uh -huh. Most of them go to friends and family. Chris gets a butt. Lucky Chris. Lucky brother. Lucky, 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 lucky sibling. All right. These apple pies look great. You've been busy. <laughs> Rarely do I have time for two projects, you know? <laughs> oh, oh no. Someone has redeemed Mercus voice for five minutes. I will change my voice. Hey Alexa, set a timer for five minutes. So we're going to continue the rest of this presentation in Marcus voice. Thank you, Joseph, for that, I guess. <laughs> okay, what else did other people send in? Uh, LD, you are not early. You are on time for once. <laughs> Look at you. You're on time. We love it when people are on time. We're just in the show and tell portion of the show. So if you would like to be featured next time, you gotta send me some photos to work with, folks. I got Sean with the hot sauce and apple pies. Look at that. Look at that. No, I did not lose my voice. Joseph has redeemed Mercus voice, and for five minutes, I have to talk like this. It's a voice from a podcast that I was on, or am on, or will be on if we think about it in the future tense. Thanks for stopping by, Phil. In <laughs> time is weird. I I agree. I tend to agree. That time is weird, especially in terms of Marcus. Okay, dokey, dokey, dokey. What is next? Next, next, next. Oh, thank you, Chipset Noob. I like, I like my Instagram as well. Part, part, pardon the weird voice because this is a thing people can redeem on my Twitch channel. You can make me do different voices on on the Twitch channel. And this is our, our baby Marcus, who is a lizard person from the future. <clears throat> ah, a meme. Oh, you do. You know who Marcus is. Aha, aha. Wonderful, wonderful. This is a meme sent to me by Ryan. Thanks, Ryan. Me listening to my friend as they passionately recommend a series that they love. I will literally never watch a single episode of this show. And Ryan was talking about one Piece. One Piece is an anime that I watched religiously for the last year and have caught up from June of last year to February. I was watching maybe four or five episodes a day. And then now I'm caught up with the rest of the world and wait a week for new episodes, just like everyone else now. <sighs> well, I'm glad you found your way from my podcast to my Twitch stream where I do Mercus voice and talk about memes and food and stuff. So thanks for hanging out. 
That's wonderful. It's very nice. Canonically, Mercus is a One Piece fan. I, I could agree with that. Like, Mercus can get on. Mercus can get on board with One Piece. I, I, I think Mercus is the chopper of of Still Fleet of Float City. I don't know. Do you think? What do you think? What do you, What do you think? <laughs> up next what else is next let's see what other folks have sent in oh a sandwich a sandwich this is from rachel thank you so much rachel for sending your house cured bacon and heirloom tomatoes and baguette from Foster Sundry with gem lettuce and QP. I think I should like gem lettuce and QP together. What do you think? How many of y'all in the chat like a BLT? Hmm, it's been a while since I've had a BLT. Hmm. Oh, Alexa, stop. Thank you so much for redeeming Mercus voice. <laughs> uh, I have to like re-listen to Float City sometimes just to hear Mercus again, because I forget. <laughs> I mean, how could you forget? But I, as the as the voice person, I find it hard to get back into the the Mercus mech, the Mercus seat. <laughs> Um, but yeah, Rachel, thank you for sending this one in. Uh, that looks like a great BLT. I now want to make BLTs. Damn. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Andrea sent this one in. Hey, Robert. Long time no see. Good to see you. Uh, Andrea sent this one in because, you know, I deal with a lot of hot dogs and this meme is great. Stand in the ashes of a trillion dead souls and ask the ghost if honor, ma honor matters. And it's just a little dancing hot dog on some hot dogs. We love we love hot dogs. I need to get um, I need to get a hot dog emote from Drip. That would be great, right? That should be a next Patreon goal. We'll, we'll make hot dog emotes, hot dog emotes, and stickers. Because we did the first round of the egg stickers when I I revealed the emotes. Because that was super fun. So maybe we'll do a reprint of the egg stickers and then do a hot dog sticker as well as a hot dog emote. That'd be sick, right? Yeah, got to add to my to-do list to ask Drip. Um, speaking of hot dogs, uh, my friend Tracy, thank you so much for being my hand model for the Mango Kazooie. Uh, this is a hot dog I designed and developed for Wonderville, which is a bar in Bushwick. And the Mango Kazooie is mango chutney, spicy mango chutney with marita peppers a little bit of vinegar, and then some fresh uh, chive and parsley on top. And that is Tracy's lovely hand being the hand, uh, uh, hot dog hand model. <laughs> this is a hot dog we did earlier in the year, and I just brought it back because I had a case of mangoes <laughs> in my house. I was like, oh, crap, I had too many mangoes. What can I do? Ah, we'll bring back the mango kazooie. Which is a brilliant name, by the way, crowdsourced from Twitter, mango kazooie very good i kind of want to play that game again i loved banjo kazooie um sometimes i also make the noises that they make when they um when any of the characters talk you know it's the witch right <laughs> uh am i the only one that remembers this oh my god uh, I started watching a new anime. I was kind of angry tweeting about uh, the last anime that I was watching. It was Miss Kazumi Loves Ramen. And there was like this weird like stalker dynamic in it. Even though it was about ramen and I love ramen and I love the education behind it. But there's just this really like terrible thread of stalking and unwanted attention in that anime. And so I, I sort of didn't love that. 
I know. Hashtag get Jen in Banjo Kazooie 3. I could just be the witch. I could be like, rah, 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 rah. <laughs> I know, anime critic Jen. Um, but this is a new one. It's called uh, Yake, Yake Tate Japan. And it's a pun, Japan, like pen as in bread, because it's all about baking. Super cute. Uh, it's got like Speed Racer, One Piece vibes. The animation style is like pretty solid and slapstick and weird um, and still super educational about bread. A lot of people on Twitter are saying that it's their favorite food anime. Uh, so I'm very excited to start it. Um, but this is Grandpa, who I noticed is wearing the same belly warmer as Zoro in One Piece. So I had to share that with you. One day I will write articles about anime and food. One day. I, I, got, I just got to pitch it. <laughs> All right. This is a birthday charcuterie and cheese board that I made for Meredith last week. Happy birthday to you, Meredith, if you end up watching later on. Uh, it's got a lot of good meats on it. You know, it's got prosciutto, 24-month aged prosciutto, some pepper and porcini brasola, which is the dried beef. There's taleggio, pecorino folle di noce, which is wrapped, it's a pecorino cheese wrapped in walnut leaves. We've got a truffle goat cheese, some thinly sliced chorizo, and then some uh, fennel sausage with some black grapes. We love a goth grape and some pepitas, uh, yeah. So I'm hoping to do more of these cheese boards for order or meat boards for order in Brooklyn. So if y'all are interested in that, you can send me a message on my website. Um, I went camping last weekend and y'all know I love cooking outside, but I actually wasn't really in charge of, of most of the food. And so when I got there, somewhat, dinner was already underway. And so there are these giant cowboy steaks on the left. Um, I just encourage everyone to have a welcome steak for me when I go camping with you. <laughs> it is covered in chive butter. You see all that butter? It's like mixing with the meat juices as it's been resting. It was so juicy. It was really good. Highly appreciate welcome steak. Um, I was in charge of breakfast. So I try to bring things that aren't going to make a lot of waste and are easy to assemble, easy to cook early in the morning like if you're hungover or just didn't get a good night's sleep uh, i tend to go for egg mcmuffin style food so the first morning we did uh fried eggs um this sausage patty that you can see and then some herb oil and people could add cheese if they wanted and the next day i did a uh, cheesy scramble with the rest of the herb oil and the rest of the sausage patties so i you know kind of recycled the ingredients, but did it in a different way so that people didn't get sick of it, you know? So I know the big McMuffin. Yeah. We could have done, you know, the sweet maple syrup on the outside on the bun, but I didn't, I just didn't want to bring a lot of stuff. And we, uh, we were cooking for like 45 people. So I uh, just got to do something that's quick and easy. And this was just satisfying, you know? Um, I don't want to complain too much because I, I had a great time and I love camping, but the bullfrogs were really loud. <laughs> the bullfrogs were like, you know that, you remember that Budweiser commercial where like the bullfrogs are, are saying all the syllables and stuff? Well, bullfrogs actually act like this. They do a lot of call and response. So if you hear at the other side of the lake, one frog say something, it goes, Bruh you would hear 16 more go wah, 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 wah. or someone would do a double like wah, wah, and then you would hear wah, 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 like all over. <laughs> so the first night I was not used to it and uh, it was quite, it was quite disturbing. But the second night I slept like a rock. Like I really tuned it out. Yeah. They're so loud. They're so, so loud. Bullfrogs. I had never been around that many amphibians before, like literally never. Yes, bullfrogs sound like semi-truck horns during the winter. Yes, agreed. They were so loud. 
Um, it was my friend Alex's birthday recently, and his mom came from Texas to make us like homemade Vietnamese food, and it was bomb. It was so good. On the left, we have a papaya salad with like shrimp and peanut, pickled onion, and these beautiful like leek flower things that she made. And then we have these summer rolls on the right that have like um, a pork loaf that's a lot like Spam, but it was like homemade. Oh, it was great. And I discovered that uh, there was like a crunchy element to the inside of these summer rolls. So like the rice paper is like soft, but there was like a tube that was that was super crispy. And I was like, what is that? You can kind of see it on the far right. There's this baton, this crispy baton. She literally just rolled up these rice paper sheets. Like, so she wet it, dried it out, and then rolled them up and then deep fried those. And then rolled those inside the summer roll rice paper. So it was like a meta, <laughs> a meta roll. So that, that baton on the right is just a crispy rice paper that she had fried. Like, what? What? <laughs> I know, it was delicious. It was so good. What's up? Chronotherm is here. Chronotherm is here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, this threw a lot of people off on Twitter. <laughs> I'm not gonna apologize for this. This is, I called it egg, but not egg, question mark. If this was an art piece, I would call it egg, but not egg. Because it is a cured egg yolk. It truly is an egg yolk, but I've cured it in... <laughs> yeah, you weren't expecting a singing entrance. <laughs> I was in a singing mood, okay? <laughs> um, it's a cured egg yolk uh, for two days in soy sauce and mirin. Just the egg yolk, no egg white. Um, and the outside here is Greek yogurt. So I made it into a spreadable snack. And uh, these toasties are not your, not your regular toasties. They are curry butter toasties that I pressed in my panini grill. So I brushed on the curry butter, pressed it in the panini grill, and now I had little toasties for my, my weird egg. <laughs> but it was a great breakfast. Delicious. It, it, it looks unsuspecting. It looks kind of just like, you know, uh, it looks like regular toast and an egg, but it's just so different. If you were sitting in front of it, you would smell that there's curry on the toast and that the egg white is not an egg white. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Amazing. What else do I have here? Um, holy crap. This is a sandwich I got after, after camping. This is from uh, Rossi and Sons. This is a sandwich shop upstate New York um, in East, I forget what the town was called, but it's called, it's it's outside of Poughkeepsie. So it's a uh, Rossi and Sons Alimentari. So these are giant focaccia um, sandwiches. This is the small, this is a half of a small, <laughs> y'all. So mine has arugula, provolone, um, like a Calabrian chili pepper condiment and porchetta and some salami and it was bomb. I only had like a quarter of it. <laughs> hey Schmoss, how you doing? We're talking about my sandwich. Yeah, from Rossi and Sons up near Poughkeepsie, New York. Really good. Um, they have two locations, the Rusta Rosteria or something like that is where they make a lot of cured meats themselves. And then um, the Alimentari location makes these sandwiches. They also have a bakery um, and a cured meat case and um, cheese case. It's, it's really a great little spot if you um, are looking for a roadside sandwich that's like as big as your head. This is the small, y'all. This was the small. <laughs> Goodness. I'm great, Schmoss. Thanks for asking. I'm excited to make some banchan after this. We're going to make some Korean snacks. Uh, what else is on my... Oh, that's the last slide. Whoops. All right. 
egg, not egg, sandwich. Lots of stuff going on. Uh, anime. And again, folks, if you have cooking photos or food projects or just see something at the store that you're curious about, take a picture and send it to me and I'll put it put it here on the slideshow. We'll talk about it. Uh, but thank you, Sean, for sending in your hot sauce and your apple pie and Ryan for the meme <laughs> and Rachel for the BLT. Great job, everybody. All right. So we are going to make some banchan. And so if you're unfamiliar or haven't really been to a Korean restaurant before, uh, if you go to a Korean restaurant, most of the time, they will give you these little plates of snacks of like pickles and that's called banchan. And that's kind of like the aperitif, like it's the, the appetizers before you get to the big rice and the, uh, the, the protein and the meat. And it's kind of genius, you know, because uh, a lot of these pickles are fermented and have a lot of, you know, uh, good gut health stuff, good fermentation, uh, and it gets your stomach going before you are about to devour lots of other things. So uh, we're going to make two things. We're going to do uh, some garlic scapes because I, I went to Chinatown this week and picked up some garlic scapes. And then we're going to do something called buchu, kimchi buchu. So it's garlic chives with, uh, yeah, garlic chives. And I have a few recipes here. Which one should I start with? Garlic scapes or garlic chives? Which one? Which one do I want to eat first? Hmm. Hmm. Well, they both require cooking. Let's do some garlic scapes first. All right. So uh, with that, yeah, scapes might be benefit from sitting and softening for a while longer. You're right. You're right. Um, let's do the scapes. Introducing cooking cam. Cooking cam's back. Hey, cooking cam. I'm going to move my microphone out of the way a little bit more. I don't really need the spit guard right now, do I? Right? Right? Right. Okay, we're going to move my banner so that it's not covering my face. There you go. <laughs> All right, so we're going to do spicy pickled garlic scapes from Seasoned by Jin. This is a Korean blogger. I'll put that in the chat if you ever want to bookmark this and do this another time. Let's go grab the garlic scapes. Let's talk about this. Scapes are a seasonal thing. They're only available um, like once a year, pretty much. It's usually in the spring, but... For some reason, uh, the weather's been weird, and I guess we're getting them a little later than usual. But these are uh, garlic shoots. This is what happens when you let that green middle of the garlic grow out. And then these ends, if you continue to soak this in water, I might do that actually. These will burst open. These will become flowers. So I might save a bunch of those and do that. Well, first we gotta wash this. One second. I'm not, I don't have washing cam. <laughs> Though maybe one day we will have that, you know. How many of you in the chat have had garlic scapes before? It's okay if you haven't. We're going to save some of these and see if we can grow the flower. Let's see if we can get the flower to bloom. It looks like they might have cut off the stems here a lot, but we'll try. We'll still try. Can make it if we try. But I'm going to cut off some ends here. bloom some here. We'll see if uh, in a couple days if uh, 
these will yield some flower blooms would be cool okay we'll put that aside hi hi well welcome ck or or do you want me to call you cold what is your name <laughs> you haven't but you've played runescape though clever You have not played RuneScape. <laughs> Has anyone had scapes, garlic scapes? I'm gonna cut off these. So I'm gonna cut them like they're green beans into uh, an inch and a half slices. That's how I will be enjoying them, or an inch, whatever. Um, think of these like garlicky green beans but they don't have a bean. It's a stalk. It's like the garlic stalk that grows. But when you saute these, I've literally never done anything else beyond pickling or just stir frying these because they're so good. It's so simple and so good. But if you've prepared them other ways, I would love to hear it. But yeah, just think of these as garlicky green beans and that's how you can play with them so you can make a casserole you can do a uh, green like garlic scape gratin you can do uh you can add these to soup you can add these to stir fry you can have it over rice so yeah it's it's super flexible but you know very very short season I'm surprised that I could find these so late in the summer. It's usually not a summer produce. It's typically spring. But because the world is too messed up weather-wise, these things are around again. I don't know. I don't know. Get these heads here. Here, I'll show you what's inside one of the one of these buds, one of these heads. So I'm gonna cut it open. And if I put it in the water, it's gonna bloom into a flower, but you can see that there's a flower about to grow here. Look at that. There's petals and the tiniest baby, oh my God, tiniest baby garlic. If I take this off, these are baby garlic. Oh my God, baby garlic. Oh, it's not in focus. Baby garlic, it's not in focus. <laughs> I need an actual camera, not my phone. Oh, you never see garlic stems in normal supermarkets with specialty shops be the place to go. Yes. Um, these are farm fresh. So like farmer's markets, outdoor markets um, would generally be the place to get them. I actually got this in Chinatown I was really surprised that it was there, um, but that's not, it's worth a, worth a check if you live near any kind of Asian supermarket. But yeah, um, I generally do not see them at big box grocery stores. So like, uh, yeah, you wouldn't find it at a Trader Joe's or Whole Foods or anything like that. Maybe Whole Foods, depending on where you live, but yeah. I find them at farmer's markets most of the time. Okay. So I actually have some pickle brine, like champagne vinegar pickle brine that I had left over from a project. And I'm going to pickle some of these. Since I have so much, we're just gonna go ahead and just drop them in the, the pickle brine enough to just stay submerged and i'll leave them in these big pieces because i can still cut them down smaller if i want to but okay i think i don't want to overstuff this actually perfect amount hooray so this is going to be for another time but now we have some pickled garlic scapes great keep cutting because the rest we're going to saute Do, 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 do. 
Yeah, Asian markets always bumping with good veg, right? I mean, I'm not surprised. <laughs> You just went in Virginia and went to one with like 12 types of local eggplants. I love to see it. You know, one of my favorite things, even if I'm not buying anything, I love to just walk around Asian supermarkets just because there are just a lot of stuff that I don't know how to cook with. Like I'm always tempted to just grab some like chrysanthemum greens. I don't know what to do with those though. I'll have to Google it. Whoa, you wish you had a picture. They were all in laundry baskets. Y'all, what? Cool. Abundance. We love abundance. I know. We need to invent the reverse knife to cut things longer. That's funny. Reverse knife. I remember when I was little... Who grew up with the um, the Scholastic Book Fair? I grew up going to this book fair at my school every year, and I got this dumb book. You know, like Scholastic puts out uh, these really like just dumb <laughs> titles. I bought a book called Inventions No One Mentions. It's like fail failed inventions. I know. I, I really just love lit reading about that stuff, but your comment about the reverse knife reminded me of that book. Inventions no one mentions. There was like a platform for dogs that you put on the outside of your car so they could just like surf the air, but it's terribly dangerous. <laughs> I forget what else. Oh, I know. Book fair was so great, right? Love book fair. I'm just taking my time with this. It's curved, so you can't really stack them and chop a lot of them. So I'm just taking my time, hanging out with y'all. They really do look like green beans, don't they? They look like those French haricot vert. But it's garlic scape. We'll just cut this thing. Save the heads. Wait, what? The only thing you remember getting from Scholastic Book Fair was that one anime draw drawing book everyone has oh i don't know what you're talking about i didn't get a drawing book we love cooking cam you're my friend cooking cam my forever friend my friend cooking cam I don't know about the drawing books. How to draw anime. Oh, it's a blue cover. Oh, of course people in this chat would know about that drawing book. I I didn't I didn't buy drawing books when I went to the Scholastic Fair. I read a lot, but you know, I didn't I didn't buy any drawing books cuz I I wasn't dexterous in that way. I have no uh hand-eye coordination when it comes to drawing. Chris, on the other hand, can do that very well. Chris is a tattoo artist, so. <laughs> Look at this pile of vegetables. How to draw manga. Oh, there it is. There you go. Found it. That was fast. The power of the internet so fast. I have a hard time reading books now. 
Okay, so we've got all my garlic scape cut. Oh, hi, Zelly. Um, no, these are garlic scapes. This, they look like green beans. They're garlic. Yeah, has anyone been reading anything good lately? I've been reading um, Jenny O'Dell's How to Do Nothing, <laughs> but I keep doing things and not finishing the book. <laughs> oh, oh, so embarrassing. <laughs> That's a good question, Shmash. Thanks for asking. Hello, Rocky Four. How's it going? Oh, it's, it's Carol. <laughs> Hi, Carol. You're reading the Hunger Games prequel. Nice. I I kind of should read that. It's it's super fast to read all of those um, Susan Collins novels. I read all three of the um, Hunger Games books super fast. Because um, they're having a movie, right? There's going to be a prequel movie. Ooh, wait, Schmoss, you're reading all the Brandon Sanderson? Which one are you on right now? Tell me. Which, which Brandon Sanderson book are you on? I cried at the end of Mistborn. <laughs> I cried so hard. Oh, you're on Stormlight, Stormlight Archive 3. I actually, <laughs> guess what? <laughs> No. I thought I had it. I, I don't have it right here. Yeah, I cried when I read the end of Mistborn. I love Stormlight Archive. It's so long, but it's it's worth the journey. Um, yeah, I enjoy all those. I even w read the um, Alloy of Law, like, post, like, <laughs> pre-industrial revolution Mistborn. <laughs> you know? Um, ooh, let the right one in. I haven't seen that movie either, so uh, I didn't know there was a book. That's great. Cool. We love. I know, we're old in a Twitch full of 22-year-olds. Uh, I know. Yes. I, I am old. I admit that. Uh, okay, so uh, for those of you who are just joining, we are going to be cooking um, this recipe. Uh, it's from a blog called Seasoned by Jin. It's a Korean blog spicy pickled garlic scapes so um i didn't pickle these we're just gonna just stir fry these really quickly you bought a lot of bookmarks because they look cool i mean bookmarks do look cool there's nothing wrong with that now you're just ready for a dole and you just have a ton of bookmarks <laughs> oh yeah check it out um, okay, so my ingredients, I have my, my garlic stem scapes chopped. I don't have a scallion right now, but I do have some wuchu. I do have some garlic chives. Maybe I'll add this in as well. We'll just gank these from my other uh, recipe. And then uh, we'll, we'll add these in. So, don't we love cooking cam? We love cooking cam. So I'll just do some same lengths here. Korean buchu. I like saying that word, buchu. Okay. So in place of my scallion, I've got some garlic chive. And with my garlic scape. All the parts of the garlic. Okay, we need sesame oil, plum syrup, something that I cannot use. I don't have that. Uh, gochugaru I have. And then gochujang, sesame seeds. Great. Okay, so... What we're going to do is we're going to turn on the stove. We want to stir fry these real quick. Got to turn on the turn on the stove first, Jen. And then we'll put all these together in a bowl. It's going to be delicious. Delicious. Delicioso. Um grab a bowl. So, actually put all these in the bowl so it's easier for me to bring to the stove and then i'll use the bowl to put all the other ingredients and then i will have some banchan to snack on while we make the other banchan making so much banchan all right 
in. I have to go get some oil real quick. All right, we're gonna use some vegetable oil. I'll turn us around when we're ready to fry, but we are not ready to fry yet. Ooh. Ooh, okay. So you've uh, you've had plum onigiri. So that plum, or correct me if I'm wrong, most of the time the plum in the onigiri is the pickled plum or ume, right? And it's really sour. Plum syrup I have never worked with. I would like to get some. Ooh, here. Uh, okay, so garlic scapes, I, I described earlier, are kind of like garlicky green beans. So if you eat them raw, it's going to probably make me... Uh, oh, these are not potent. Oh, here it is. It comes. So that garlicky sting is in these. <laughs> It's a little um, fibrous, so I don't really recommend eating these raw. But you could do like a pesto. Hmm. Okay, let's see. Oh, okay, here we go. Yeah, maize is a green plum, so the flavor would be more like tart and grassy rather than sour and intense like umeboshi. Thank you, Schmas, for the distinction. Cool. Great. Love it. Love to hear it. All right, let's test if my water, if my uh, pan is hot. I heard a little sizzle. Ooh, we hear a sizzle. We hear a sizzle. Ooh, nice. We hear a sizzle. I'm going to drop one chive in there to see. Not quite. Almost. Almost ready to stir fry. Oh yeah, you should get the onigiri book. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, it sells out every time my friend puts it at the at the bookstore, at community bookstore. So here it is. Onigiri, Japanese rice balls made easy. It's from Viz Media. It's like an it's not a comic book, but it's in the style of I don't know. It's in the spirit of Viz Media, so uh, it's really great. I helped recipe test this for the English language version. Um, it's really easy. If you want to get into rice balls, you, you will get really good at making them with this book. Like, I guarantee you, it's really, really fun. I made every single recipe in this book. There's even these diagrams. <laughs> Isn't that adorable? Okay, I hear some sizzling. Let's turn the cooking cam around. Let's get you some height. Let's try to get in. Okay, all right. I, okay, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> it's a little tilted, but it's something. You can see inside cooking cam, right? <laughs> okay, here we go. Drop them in. All right. Let those sear off for a minute. And then in my bowl, I'm going to do one and a half tablespoons of sesame oil. I'm really just eyeballing it because I don't like to measure. <laughs> Uh, we're not doing two tablespoons of the plum syrup, but to substitute, I have run amok maple, run amok maple, uh, lime leaf, uh, maple syrup. So we'll do two tablespoons of this or approximation of two tablespoons. One, two. I just count because it's all proportions in the end, you know? <laughs> all right. Um... One tablespoon gochugaru. So gochugaru is a 
brand dried pepper that you can get at the store. So I do one big pinch and one little pinch is a tablespoon. I've measured my pinches. <laughs> so I know how much they are. All right, let's see. Nice little toss. Got a little toss. Um, one and a half to two tablespoons gochujang. Get my gochujang. This is the best brand of gochujang. I like it because it, it stacks well on the fridge. All right. We're going to do two because I love spicy. Two spoonfuls. Ah, look at that. Okay. Done. Done. What else? And then sesame seeds. So this is actually, um, let me read this. Wheat flour, corn syrup, water, hot pepper, powder, salt, wheat, uh, alcohol, soybean powder, koji. So this is, um, there's no fish. There's no shrimp or shellfish in this gochujang paste. So this dish is um, is vegan, but it's not gluten-free. This brand of gochujang has wheat in it. So be careful, be advised. Look at my professional flipping skills. I'm gonna salt this a little bit. And then do a little bit of white pepper. Nice. Nice. And I get my chopsticks because I don't want to snack on things. Let's see how done these are. I mean, I see some char, but. You just want to cook these long enough to um, dampen that sharp garlic flavor. Like, it, it's like if you were stir frying garlic with other things. I do, excuse me. Pepper in my nose. I use white pepper because um, that's what I have. <laughs> I was too lazy to grind more black pepper. Oh, it's hot. Mmm. Perfectly tender. My goodness. Okay, we're gonna turn off the heat. A little bit more salt, though. Delicious. Mmm. All right. So we're gonna turn us back around. Oh man, there's a lot of pepper in my nose right now. Uh, gotta be careful. Okay. We're going back down to the cooking cam. Bring us on down, okay. So there's all this stuff that I was measuring out. We're gonna stir it a little bit so that the um, Goju Chang mixes with everything else. It's a paste, so you have to make sure it's incorporated with everything else so you don't get chunkies everywhere. All right. And then all you do after you mix this all together is uh, put your garlic scape in there. Great, right? Easy. So the recipe that I linked the recipe that I linked um, works with pickled garlic scape, but I don't have those, so I just um, stir fried them, and then you mix it all together. Okay. Great, oh my God, I'm so excited. I wish I made some rice, it's looking yummy. I was making this for future Jen. Tonight Jen wasn't really gonna eat this. Get a 
ramekin. Authentic. We get some lovely garlic scapes. Look at, oh my goodness. I'm so excited about this snack. It's gonna be so good. Oh my goodness. Look at you go. We love you, little snack. Okay, I'm gonna finish it with some sesame seeds. Look at that. Ooh. Our first banchan is done. Boop, boop. Yeah. Cool. All right, let's give it a taste, y'all. Mm -hmm. that's, oh, that's good. Mmm, <laughs> that's good. So I could chill this in the fridge and then just serve this over rice if I wanted to. But it's kind of like, feels like a spicy teriyaki, but it's like garlicky and fun. Mmm, I like it. It's really good. Hell yeah. Success. Instead of the plum stuff, I use maple. So it's a little sweeter than intended, but I don't mind that. It's not a lot, too. Mmm, okay. On to the next. Mmm. Put this away in my dinner table. Ah, yum, yum, yum. Good job. Um, great, delicious. It says it can last for about two or three weeks in the fridge. Really cool. All right, let's do a music switch here. I'll go with Moonfy. All right. Next up, this is from a blog called Korean Bapsang, and it's Buchu Kimchi. Oh, this is garlic chive. I have a lot of garlic product here. I love alliums. Are you kidding me? Um, this is garlic chive kimchi. So if you'd like to bookmark this for another time, I'm going to eat all of it <laughs> eventually. But I was cooking it for future Jen so that she could enjoy... Uh, Full, full meal of other things because I have other plans for dinner today. <laughs> um, okay, buchu kimchi. I need a pound of buchu. We got it. Okay, I have rice flour, gochugaru, fish sauce, salted shrimp, um, and then sugar and sesame seeds. Whisk together the glutinous powder and half a cup of water. Okay. So I'm gonna double this. So I need two tablespoons. So I'm gonna do a cup of water. Cup. We're gonna put it in that pan that we had earlier. Okay. And then got my glutinous rice flour here. I've inspired you to make Korean food for dinner now. Ha ha, <laughs> you're welcome. I mean, Shmaz, you, you know a lot more about Korean food than I do, which is exciting. I'm just gonna eyeball the spoons of this into my water. My nose is running, wonderful. <laughs> Put away my glutinous rice flour. Okay, whisk together, uh, simmer over low heat, stirring occasionally until it thickens into a thin paste. All right, let's let's get cooking cam over there. Boop boop boop. Whoop. Okay. All right. All right. Boop. Okay. 
<laughs> get a whisk. Got a, got a hot whisk. Hot whisk. Turn it below. I use my dirty pan <laughs> just because it's all in the same family, right? Like all these flavors are all in the same family, so I don't really feel weird about using the same pan. Whisking, 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 whisking. Whoa, this whisks really fast. Holy crap. So fast. Maybe I should have whisked it with the water before I heated it, but oh well. <laughs> I'm just gonna put some elbow grease into it. Okay. Whisk together until we get a thin paste. Wash the chives. Uh, okay, we're gonna do that. Cut into two or three sections crosswise. Mix all the seasoning ingredients with half a cup of water in a bowl. Add the garlic chives. Uh, gently rub. Um, let them stand at room temperature two to three hours and the chives wilt and reduce in volume. Um, cool, so it will just naturally ferment. Awesome. So, what I'm going to do is actually going to, I'm going to ferment it at room temperature for like a couple days and then see how it goes. Uh, and then I'll put it in the fridge, but this is just prep work for me to enjoy another day. Very excited. Oh, wow. This became a paste super, super fast. My, 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 my. We're going to remove it from the heat. And I'm going to use this as my mixing bowl. Go back this way. Boop, boop. Go back down. Go back down. Go back down, camera. Oh boy. It's gonna fall. It's gonna fall. There we go. Boop, 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 boop. Boop. <laughs> My ridiculous setup. Okay, so this is a little chunky, so I'm gonna just keep whisking this until it's better. <laughs> And then we'll add all the ingredients, all the other ingredients. I had actually never seen a rice flour kind of paste used in kimchi, but I see the reason. Like I see, I see why you do this. Because a, it kickstarts the fermentation process with the heat, and b uh rice just uh has a really cool funky taste when it ferments like kind of sweeter on the sweeter side anyway should have whisked this in the cold water before i turn on the heat whatever we're dealing with it now we're just gonna mash up all the stuff that's too lumpy and keep whisking Wait, what? Wait, what? You see the new Pokemon they revealed today? Fido, it's a dog made of bread. Um, amazing. That's cool. I had not seen. I had not seen that yet. We will, I will look that up unless someone has a link right now. Fido, very cute, very nice. Oh, <laughs> Elden Ringu was my uh, was my title when I was playing uh, Elden Ring the other day. I only streamed for like an hour, but I forgot to change it. I thought I changed it. Oh well, it's all good. Okay, we got a few chunks in here. I could run this through a sieve, but I'm really lazy. I just want to eat my buchu. Choo. It's like a train of garlic. <laughs> no. I know. Pokemon is ruthlessly cute. Oh my god. Poppy Mochi. That is too cute. Way too cute. Way too cute. 
This is perfect timing because I started watching Yakitate. <laughs> the bread anime. Very perfect. I wonder if that's like the inspiration. Kaido. Can you imagine being in the writer's room of like the English translation of Pokemon and like coming up with these puns? <laughs> that would be fun. That would be really, really fun. Like, besides execute, you know, like what other egg puns could we have in there? Excited, excelente. Yeah. <laughs> I do love that though, Papi Mochi. That is too cute. Papi Mochi, will you be my Papi Mochi? All right, getting smoother here. Got a little bit of chunks though. All right. Rice flour, you are a cruel mistress. everybody having for dinner tonight? I would love to hear it. Please let me know in the chat. So sound off. What are you having for dinner? Let's hear it. Okay. Now, I'm going to mix all this stuff together. So I'm doing a double, a double batch. So I'm gonna do four tablespoons, so eight tablespoons of gochugaru. Oh my god. I don't think I have eight tablespoons. This is like half a cup. Wait a minute. That is half a cup. Well, why don't I? I'll just use up all my gochugaru. Done. We got rid of a container in my pantry. This is great. <laughs> no more gochugaru. Okay. Three tablespoons of fish sauce. I don't know if I have that much fish sauce either. Well, maybe I do. One. Okay, great. Fish sauce, done. Boom. Uh, one tablespoon salted shrimp. Oh, this is gonna be fun. So I have bagoong, which is Filipino salted shrimp, but I also have dry brine, dry shrimp, like baby shrimp that I could grind up right now. I'm gonna do that actually. That's more fun, right? More stuff for me to do on the stream. <laughs> okay, one teaspoon sugar and one teaspoon sesame seeds. Okay, let's go, we're doing double. So one, two, Two lines of sugar. <laughs> and then some sesame seeds. Oh wait, do we not put the sesame seeds until later? Oh, well, just do a bunch. Hooray! Okay, last thing that's missing is the buchu itself. The, look at this, it's just, kimchi paste basically great the buchu and the shrimp so we're gonna do the shrimp first i have a mortar and pestle here Let's see it's kind of like making a roux yeah but this is in preparation for like the fermentation process so it's rice specifically rice okay Boy, that, that bite made me sniffle earlier. All right, I've got my dried shrimp. How many did we want? Uh, it is one tablespoon, so two tablespoons of this. Got some shrimpies, baby shrimpies. I'm gonna add a generous pinch of salt in there. You can see I got shrimp. Just gonna pound it. It's 
not wet, but I could. Just want to get it small enough that it mixes in with all the lovely bits. No big pieces of shrimp, please. We don't want that. Ah, burgers and dogs tonight. Nice, Sean. Sounds delicious. Schmas is still deciding details. Something with rice and kimchi now. Great. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, Schmas. That's what it's doing. Yeah, the rice is going to help kickstart the fermentation process. All right, so I've got like basically a powdered shrimp with salt in here. Keep going, keep going. Break up these big pieces. So we're basically going to have shrimp powder here. See that it's powder now. A few big pieces I'm going after in here. Huh. It's hot. It's like 90 degrees in New York. Okay, see, I got this one big trick piece. Grab it. All right. Boop. Shrimp powder now going into our mixture. Put that by the sink. And I had made, well, maybe I'll keep this. I'll keep this. <laughs> this is some ghee fun I use for like ramen toppings. And I have some like instant ramen that I got from Chinatown recently. So we're going to keep it. I'm not going to put it in this. Let's go get the buchu. So we've got lots and lots of garlic chives. I'm just gonna cut off the ends here and then we're gonna cut the rest into like just thirds. Buchu! It's like Pikachu, but buchu. Buchu! Do half of the time, actually. A pound at a time. Okay. Oof. Cutting off the ends, use it for broth or something. And then the length of this, we'll cut into, maybe I'll cut it into quarters, because that's half. Yeah, okay, so we'll do quarters instead. And then here. All right, look at that buchu. Buku buchu. So much buchu. Okay. I'm gonna get my uh, saucy sauce here. There's a shrimp. We're gonna whisk it in. Then we're gonna, uh, I'll get a glove in a second, but just remove the whisk. I'm gonna put this cut up buchu. I'll mix it with a glove in a second. I just wanna cut the other half really quick. Woo. All right. Cut off the ends. You see? Use that for a broth. It's going to be great. Half. I'm going to cut this in half. Boochu. I like saying boochu. <laughs> it's fun. It's fun to say boochu. All right. Let's get all the boochu into the pan now. And the rest is to mix this together and then pack it away where it's going to ferment for like 
a couple days. But let me get, get this scrap stuff out of the way. We'll get this into the freezer later. We'll make a broth or a chive broth. Okay. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Oh yeah. Speaking of kickstarting, the still fleet Kickstarter launched if anyone listened to Float City. Yeah. Thank you, Schmoss, for the reminder. Um, I have a blurb on the Kickstarter. Let me let me uh I'll link it. This is the game that we played on Float City, and you can buy the book now. It's 10 years in the making. Wythe has been writing this book for 10 years. And Mike Regnetta has been playing another game, like a still fleet other game as practice for like the same amount of time. And then we used this game as the backbone of Fluid City. Um, I'm gonna get a glove. This is very exciting. Get a glove. And I get a container. I gotta, I gotta be able to ferment this. Do a wide mouth. Wide mouth jar. All right. I'm gonna thoroughly mix this buchu. Woo! Slightly warm, which helps with the fermentation. It already looks like banchan. Like, it already looks like something I want to eat. <laughs> Spicy, funky, garlicky. When I saw this in the store, I was like, I want to make banchan. Like, I want to make this into an appetizer. And it will be my snack. And it will make me sniffle. <laughs> but yeah, the Still Fleet um, Kickstarter is already like, uh, it already made their goal. So they're going to be releasing more stretch goals um, and fun things. Uh, yeah, just stay tuned for that. I'm so excited for them. I can't believe they're, they're on track to like maybe hit like $20,000. It's pretty crazy. I mean, the initial Kickstarter goal was like 7,000, <laughs> right? Grabbing from the bottom, making sure we're coating every layer of gotcha. Okay, 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 okay. Oh yeah, look at that. Just crushing it a little bit just to get some of that juice. All right. Look at that. So good. And then what's going to happen is this is going to reduce in volume by like a lot. It's going to like, you know how you cook down spinach? It's going to be like that. <laughs> but I'm using a room temperature technique. So think of this like rice paste as like koji. It's, it's going to like help the fermentation process. All right. So to compare, I'm going to have a piece right now, just so I know what it tastes like to start. But I can't wait for it to be fermented. Oh my gosh, that tastes so good already. <laughs> Whoa, that's so good. Whoa, Sean's going to try to catch some fish. Good luck. I hope you catch a ton of fish. Whoa, this is delicious. So this is pescatarian because it has shrimp in it. But you could omit the shrimp and the fish sauce. In one of the cookbooks that I work on, worked on, um, there's like a vegan fish sauce that you can make with like black garlic 
and shiitake mushrooms, dried shiitake mushrooms. So check that out. It's in the Philippine X cookbook. Oh, see, it's already lost a ton of volume. It's like tamping down. So over the next couple days, it's going to exchange water. You know, like the water content, the garlicky water content inside the chives is going to leave and then mix with all this spice stuff on the outside and then bring that in inside the fibers to reach equilibrium. It's very exciting stuff. Science. Excuse me. My nose is so runny. <laughs> but already this tastes delicious. Like, I... Wow. It's, an, it's a dish that kind of evolves, so you could still eat it right now, but you could wait a day and then try it, and then another day and then try it, and it's just going to get better and better as it sits. Oh my gosh. I love that. <laughs> it's so good. Okay. I'm going to stop snacking. Pardon me. I'm gonna go wipe this. Be right back. Okay. We're gonna get it into this jar. We'll see how much we can fit in this jar. Let's see. <laughs> I bet we can fit it, fit all this in the jar. I pack it pack it down boy this is not <laughs> I'm glad I'm wearing a glove so messy yeah I'm gonna definitely taste them every day it's so good already like wow I'm I'm impressed <laughs> I will definitely clean the <laughs> clean the sides of this jar. My goodness. Okay. Oh, I'm gonna need a second jar, I think. Maybe? I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe? Who knows? All I know is that I already like the taste. It's great. Definitely gonna need another jar. <laughs> and it's gonna lose volume. It's gonna like, it's already, it's at the top, but I know like in two days or even just in an hour, it's gonna drop, which is pretty cool. Okay. Other jar. messy dish. I mean, kimchi in general. It's very messy, but worth it. So worth it. Kimchi, garlic, chive, go. This is way less involved than Napa cabbage kimchi. Because the that, you have to salt between every layer of leaves first, and then you spice it up and then let it sit. It takes so long, but this one's only days, a matter of days. Pretty cool. I oh know, so messy. All right. Cool. All right. We've made two kinds of banchan that I will be enjoying over the next couple weeks. Very exciting. Future Jen will be so happy. My goodness. Let's make some rice.
make some omelet maybe, some custard egg. My goodness. Hmm. Okay. Out of the way. Take off this dirty glove. Ooh. Let's wipe the jars. So cool. All right, dirty jar. At the top. There we go. Not messy. Great. I'm gonna tamp it down a little bit more. Self-pickling system. Very cool. All right, now, tamp down this one. Well, this one is not as full, but that's okay. Tamp, 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 tamp. Oh no, I have to try it. Oh no. <laughs> it's so good. And it's not spicy. Peppery, but it's not spicy. Bochigaro, really good. If you like that subtle pepper flavor, I highly recommend investing in a in a tub of gochugaru or um, Aleppo pepper or Urfa pepper. Ooh, pickling mustard green like st Taiwanese style. That is super good. One of my favorite like fast Taiwanese meals is a fried, deep fried pork chop. They cut them super thin and then they uh, coat them in cornstarch. And um, so they deep fry the pork chop and then you have it over rice with pickled mustard green and it's so good. Oh my gosh, I love it. Delicious. Okay, those are my two, my two garlic scapes. I'm gonna go get my snack. All right, folks, um, I'm going to turn off cooking cam. We'll just hang out and eat this with you. And let's play that, um, let's play around a Chopped, folks. Uh, let's pretend we're on Chopped. If you don't know this TV show, there's a basket with four mystery ingredients in it, and chefs have to use them to make a dish. Um, in our version, there are no wrong answers. Uh, the purpose of the exercise is to think about how far ingredients can go and maybe inspire your next meal. I don't know. I don't know. Um, so imagine you have all the tools and time that you need. This is just a game, you know, just a really fun chat game. Um, and just imagine that you have all the tools and like all the time that you need to make something just like, I don't know, pie in the sky, you know, let's, let's go with, um, garlic scapes or chives. Gochujang. Um, what else? Sesame seeds. Okay. Garlic, tribes, or scapes is one thing. Um, sesame seeds, I said. Sesame seeds. Gochujang. And what else? One more item. Chocolate. How would you cook all four of these in a dish? Or you can use two ingredients or only three. Um, it's just like a, a fun like thought exercise. So garlic chives escapes, sesame seeds, gochujang, and chocolate. Meanwhile, I'm going to eat my stir fried garlic seeds. Mmm. I don't know. What would you make with these ingredients that I give you in a chopped basket? Already, garlic scape grilled cheese, sesame seeds, gojujang mayo, 
on the outside. Mmm. Yum. Oh my gosh, what did you do? Sesame pancake. With, um, scallion, sesame pancake, with garlic chives inside. Chocolate gochujang dipping sauce. I know, gochujang mayo. That sounds good. Ooh! That's a good idea. I would leave the chocolate out and make a potato salad. Hell yeah. That sounds great. I actually... No, it's not my cookbook. <laughs> my cookbook has a potato salad with wasabi sesame seeds. And scallion. But potato salad, good idea. I don't know. The chocolate's the curveball, LT. So how would you cook? Garlic chives escapes with sesame seeds, gochujang, or chocolate. No pressure. It's just a game. Just a thought exercise. Because maybe I'll get a good idea. Maybe I have a good idea. Who knows? Mmm. This is so good. <laughs> There was a chive that fell off the thing. I'm just gonna have to eat it. Hmm. Yeah, I wish I had rice right now. I need to buy more rice. Ooh, chocolate is tough. I wonder if you work all that into an ice cream topping. Hell yeah. Like, you could do like a sesame seed crunch, uh, gochujang um, syrup. Like I would dilute that, you know, dilute the gochujang with, um... yeah, I would just uh, use like pineapple juice and reduce that into a syrup that you could pour over ice cream and then do some chopped chocolate or you could do chocolate bark. <laughs> with a little bit of gochujang mixed in and then sesame seeds on top. Ooh, make a mole with the chocolate and ground sesame seeds and gochujang and served over charred scapes. Hell yeah, that sounds great. That's a good idea. I love that. Good thinking. There was a new Iron Chef episode with chocolate. It's a lot of like steak, duck, you can make a chocolate duck sauce. Cause duck goes really well with citrus. So does chocolate. Ooh, goju chang, orange chocolate. You just take like pieces of orange and dip them in chocolate and goju chang. Just a good snack. Ooh, gochujang caramel. That's a great idea. Yum. Yeah. I love these ideas so far, folks. No pressure to if you're not somebody who can think on, on, the, on their feet. You can always tweet me the answers later. Because I love talking about this stuff. Duh. My goodness. Mm. I love this. It's so good. I'm sorry, I had to blow my nose a little bit. <laughs> uh, last call for ideas. How would you combine garlic chives or scapes? Sesame seeds, gochujang, and chocolate. So if you blend up sesame seeds, you get what? You get tahini. We could do a tahini chocolate halva with the uh, with gochujang. Doesn't that sound nice? 
smoothie. I don't know about a smoothie, but you're on the right track here. Wait, garlic chive pesto. Mmm. With like a goju jang pasta. What if we made pasta like like a little red with the goju jang in it? And then we did like a garlic chive pesto and then finish it with some toasted sesame seeds. Yeah, this is a chop game. I said the introduction. <laughs> well, last call friends for ideas. How would you combine all these things? Ooh, a bread, yes. You could do a bread. Yeah, you could totally do a bread. <laughs> what if it was like, what if it was just focaccia and then you just did like chopped scapes on top and like in the divots there were like sesame seeds and swirls of like gochujang. Yeah, gochujang butter. There you go. There you go. That's good. It's really good. It sounds awesome. Hell yeah. I love it when we work together. I love it. All right, folks, um, I gotta go clean up my kitchen. Ooh, like a croissant with chocolate chunks and the rest on top. Hell yeah, that sounds great. I'm into it. I'm into that. That sounds delicious. Um, cool. So let me, let's find somebody. Let's find somebody to raid. Oh, yeah. Let's raid Pat. We always raid Pat. I'll join in that chat in a second. Uh, pizza. Okay. Here. We're going to mute that stream for a second. And then, yeah. Folks, thanks for hanging out with me. It's always so nice. Uh, I hope that you got some good Korean recipes. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to do some Elden Ring streaming uh hopefully later on this week but uh we'll see we'll see uh but thanks for hanging out i always appreciate y'all i'll try to be back next wednesday or sooner if i'm gonna be playing elden ring um but yeah uh make sure to send me your cooking photos this week i'll feature you on the stream next week uh try to stay cool it's really hot in new york right now oh it's, so, ugh, it's like 90 like bad nasty anyway have a good rest of your evenings, and I'll see y'all later. Please stick around for the raid. Uh, Pat is really cool and a friend who lives in my neighborhood. So, uh, yeah, enjoy. Enjoy Pat's stream. See y'all. Bye.